Jeff from Two Hacks Garage. Well, in a previous video, you showed Jimmy and I boring an engine block with the old Van Norman 777S bore bar, one that he had refurbished. Worked really, 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 really well. Uh, in the time between then and now, Jimmy picked up an old serve equipment honing machine. And he spent the last few days, and I've been helping him this morning, on getting this thing set up, modified to the way we're going to actually want to be able to use this thing. Uh, so that's kind of what we're going to show today is using this honing machine. I'll bring in a close-up of what it actually looks like and does. Jimmy's going through and getting some stones right now. Um, this isn't the small block Chevy that we're building for my friend Todd. Uh, we still got to hone that one. This is an old uh, 1970 LT1 that Jimmy's working on putting together. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start setting this up. But let me show you what we got here and kind of how this operates. All right. So basically this old machine here, this is a hand lever and you go up and down with that in the cylinder. Uh, Jimmy's working on putting the stones on. It all articulates on these U-joints here. So it'll actually stay true, stay true with the cylinder. Um, this engine block here is... Um, the customer didn't want it bored, they wanted it honed, they're using all original factory parts with this. Well, it's the pistons that was in it once before. Yeah, so it, he's got all the pistons or anything with it, so we're actually just going to hone it. But what happens is it sits in here in this cradle here, and this is what kind of Jimmy had modified. Uh, kind of clamps in place, it actually does slide this way if you want, but this actually rotates this way. So you're going to put the deck surface actually flat. So when that thing right there is going up and down, it's going up and down. And you can kind of see here what this machine here looks like. Serve equip machine. And what happens is, is you have this bottom here. You can't see right now, but underneath here, there's a, a pump and there's a, a little drain back right there. It's got oil in there and it's just a specific honing oil for this machine. And what it does, it pumps it up <coughs> through here and there's a hose that goes down into the cylinder, pumps oil in while this thing's going up and down in the cylinder. So that's kind of what we're working with today. This one's kind of a learning experience for me more than anything, but kind of for Jimmy too, because this is a new machine to him. Um, it's a new old machine that yeah. I had to rebuild. Yeah, and he's got this thing pretty much rebuilt in like three days. All with the air. So what he's doing now, is on these hones, just like if you were to do a regular hone garage job, it's got stones. And what he is doing now is he is adding the stones to it. Um, real quick, Jimmy, can you explain? Um, One thing we forgot to do. Look out the tippet. Yep, so we're gonna tip this thing, but Jimmy, can you explain what different stones are for? Well, different piston rings, you have different grits of stones. Um, like on a chrome molly, it seems to be a big argument sometimes between piston ring manufacturers. You hone them anywhere between 220 and 300. Sometimes some of the pistons companies or ring companies say hone them 400. I found if you hone them 300 on chrome molly rings, they work just fine. That's what this is getting. So, yeah. And... You know, in some cases, it's a good idea to check the manufacturing specs with that, too. But uh, so what Jimmy's going to do now is he's actually going to rotate this engine block to where it needs to go.
Well, we're going to call that a wrap for today. So this was Jimmy and I just learning how to use this machine, seeing what we were going to end up needing to modify more for what we were going to be using it for. Uh, like we talked about earlier, this is a 1970 LT1. It had been sitting for a very long time. Uh, the guy has all the original parts, pieces for it. Jimmy's already gone through that. He didn't want to board over, have to get new pistons. So really, Jimmy had already used a bore gauge, checked the taper, cylinders were fine. They really just needed to be, you know, honed, deglazed, all that type of stuff, you know, so when Jimmy puts this engine back together with new rings, everything seats fine. So as we were going through this, one thing we did notice, one thing we were going to have to do is we're going to build a stop for this. So when we were going down, um, the actual stones don't get down into the mains. So we're going to make a cool little setup on this so we can set it, each cylinder go down, we're good to go. Um, the hose with this, we need a longer hose for oiling and make a little stand to actually dribble oil down in the cylinders. We might actually get a more uh, capacity pump. It's, it's pumping enough for what we need to do, but we want more oil getting down in there. Um, a, a couple other minor things we're probably going to do is make a cantilever so this is more balanced and weighted on here. And uh, while this does have a pneumatic piece where it can go up and down, uh, Jimmy and I are looking at it from a perspective of actually feeling it in there. It does have a little ammeter gauge in here, so you're noticing Jimmy doing uh, a little pressure on there. If it's too much pressure in that cylinder, you'll actually see the ammeter gauge go up and it'll actually stop this motor and it'll stop this hone. So it's a six amp setup, as Jimmy just said. So if it's going to go over six amps, it, it's not going to be able to spin. It's too tight. You don't want it too loose and you don't want it too tight. You adjust this in and out. So yeah, this was our test one. This is a block that it, it's actually virgin bore. It's, it's like, like I said just a few minutes ago, it's been sitting a long time. Um, so this was our kind of our test mule of learning this. What more modifications do we need to do? So when we do have a freshly bored engine like that 388 that we're gonna do, we have everything set up right, exactly of how we want it and go from there. So today was a learning lesson for Jimmy and I. We're gonna modify this old home cabinet and get it exactly the way we want it so we can get pumping out a whole bunch more engines with that so yeah and by the way when we go to do that we'll explain more on actually setting this up today was just hey you know what let's just see what happens let's learn a few things let's figure out what we got to modify and the next video we'll do is when we do hone that 388 we'll go through on the different setups on this how to measure these to where you need because that one's going to have to be honed two thousandths over and will be more, a lot more explanative on actually using one of these cabinets. You might want to say that I've already checked the bore on this thing and checked the piston yeah. to wall clearance, and it's fine. It's just like it was. Yeah. I believe him. I believe him that it was uh, the engine's been a part of all these years, obviously from the telltale signs of it, but also the piston to wall clearance was right. Yeah. So as Jimmy just said. He checked the bore on this, factory specs, the pistons and everything, and it is correct. And oddly enough, I, I know the engine, or the car that this engine came out of. Um, I do have a short on it from a long time ago. It is a super ratty little Nova now. It was actually in, I, I want to say, one of the old like street machine magazines and all that. Um, what Jimmy's doing right now is he's actually getting the hot tank cleared off, because after these sit here, dribble down, get all the oil off of it. This is the step where you'll see it going in the hot tank to be finally cleaned before it gets assembled. Oh, another thing you did see us do with this is we did run a little dingleberry hone through the uh, lifter bores. Uh, basically, that is just cleaning those up and Jimmy did take a dingleberry hone through each cylinder after we honed it to clean a little bit more up in there. There is a little it's fine, but you can see a little bit of marks. Just cleaned all that up. So with that, guys, we're going to get to work, and we got a whole lot more stuff to do. Um, hope you learned a few things. Next video, when we set this up, show you how you really do it with everything. We'll be more explanative on setting this up. It'll be modified. It'll be ready to go. See you tomorrow.